Hello everybody, welcome once again to a new session of Financial Literacy Series uh, Lobo Strongview. We are very happy that you are here with us today. In this occasion, we have partnered with JBA Financial Services to bring you a great topic. We have as a guest speaker, um, Michael Black. He is a representative there. He's gonna, I'm gonna be introducing um, him in just a little bit, but I would recommend you grab a sheet of paper and a pen because he's gonna be sharing valuable information about how to uh, spend wisely and how to manage your money during a difficult time, during a tight economy, just like the one that our world and our nation is going through at the moment. So thank you very much for being here, thank Michael, you. and welcome. Thank you, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, as Francisco said, my name is Michael Black. I'm one of the partners with JBA Financial Services. Uh, I've been doing this since 2003, uh, and we focus in our office on uh, wealth management, uh, employee benefits, uh, financial planning. So this fits really well in our wheelhouse and uh, we are excited to be a part of it. Thank you, thank you so much. This is a huge contribution to not only our families, but our area, our community as well. And hopefully our families and those who, who watch this episode of Lobo Strongview uh, get the best of it. So thank you very much and welcome. Thank you uh, today for attending the uh, Stretching My Money in a Tight Economy uh, session. Uh, as uh, was noted earlier, my name is Michael Black. Uh, I'm a financial advisor here in Longview with JBA Financial Services. Uh, we are uh, happy to be part of Longview. Uh, our family is part of uh, Longview ISD. Uh, so we're, we're really excited about this opportunity. Uh, what we want to talk about today is an easy subject. Uh, but sometimes hard to put in practice. So a lot of the questions we get in an economy like this, uh, when things are slowing down a little bit, when jobs may have been cut, uh, you know, for whatever reason, uh, people ask us, how do, how do we make it work? Uh, well, obviously, you've got to tighten down your budget a little bit. Uh, you've got to develop a spending plan. Uh, you've got to live more frugally. Um, and you've got to think... Uh, you got to be more value oriented, trying to find what you can get for less money. Um, in a in a tightening credit market, what this means to us is uh, less credit is going to be available. Uh, there's going to be a lot more scrutiny, uh, and it's going to be important to save towards purchase instead of using credit. Use cash instead. Uh, so this may, means this means that our habits may need to change a little bit. Um, but there's also going to be more opportunities uh, as businesses may be uh, uh, going through liquidations. There may be lower retail prices, um, so we can get a little bit more for our money. Uh, sometimes the hardest part is getting started. Um, and what I tell people is the first thing you need to do is determine all sources of your income. Uh, there may be... Uh, uh, extra job opportunities that you hadn't thought about, uh, whatever it is, determining all the sources of income first. Uh, the next is we need to track where your money goes. Uh, and as we're tracking where your money goes, we can plug the leaks. Uh, and then the discipline comes in, where you got to stay on track. Uh, because once you have a little bit of savings, it's easy to use that money. Uh, but then we'll talk about tips to living frugally, and then, and then we'll talk about purchasing large ticket items. So the first part, uh, determining your sources of income. Uh, these are just some options, uh, some examples of where your income may come from. It could be paychecks, full or part-time work. It could be allowances, disability payments, alimony or child support, bonuses, tax refunds. Uh, you know, it's, you'd be surprised of how many people uh, don't realize where all their income sources are. Uh, I've come across many cases where uh, alimony or child support is not paid current, um, or people don't use their tax refunds appropriately. They may go buy a large ticket item um, instead of putting that money in savings. So generally, income is spent in four different ways. 
Um, your paycheck goes towards your expenses. It goes towards debt servicing. Uh, it goes towards savings, and it goes towards cash. Uh, and a lot of one big question that I'll ask my clients is, how much cash did you spend last week? And I even have to ask myself that. Uh, many times I don't know, uh, but the times that I do, it's because I realize I spent too much cash last week. It could be. It could have been on uh, uh, fast food meals. It could have been on uh, you know little things that maybe I didn't need. Uh, but I spend it anyway, and those things add up. Most people uh, can tell you how much your how much what you what you spend on your fixed expenses, such as your mortgage, or rent, or cell phone plans. Uh, most people know how much the car note is. Uh, a lot of people know what the minimum payments for their credit card is, but very few people know how much cash they spend. So the spending plan. Uh, this is a difficult thing for most households. Uh, most people think that a spending plan says you cannot spend money or that you have to be uh, so tight with your money that you can't enjoy it. Uh, and I don't think that's true. Um, a spending plan is it's a wise way to, to use your money. Um, in our house, uh, we do our best to make this a, a family project. Um, you know, because of because of my job, I I tend to take more responsibility for it. But I, I certainly involve my wife, and we talk to our kids. You know, our kids are fourth grade and sixth grade, so they don't completely understand. But we're trying to help them to to develop a habit of healthy spending, and don't just go spend the money because you have it. Um, but for our spending plan, uh, we do we we include as much of the family as possible. Uh, we, our goal is to try to trim expenses. Let's see where we're spending money that we don't actually need to be spending it on. Uh, we do our best to pay ourselves first. Uh, actually, after our tithe, then we will pay ourselves. Uh, this is how much savings we need according to what we want to, what we, what our goals are. You know, and, and right here it says return to a culture of savings. Uh, we try our best to have cash reserves. Uh, we we happen to live in an old house. Uh, and something's going to break five or six times a year. Uh, we've got to have cash on hand for that, whether it's a new air conditioner or uh, uh, you know a small project, whatever it is. Uh, the cash reserves are it's a huge deal. Um, and what I've found to be true, unless you have a spending plan, uh, most people will spend whatever they have, and they won't realize uh, where they fail to be prudent. When you're developing that plan, you'll start to see, all right, where's the leaks in my spending? Where, Where's my cash going? Where am I paying for that I don't need to be paying for? Um, and I call that, where, where are the leaks? Uh, there could be finance charges that are tied to high interest credit cards uh, and payday loans. Um, transportation, a lot of people have more vehicle than what they actually need. Um, cell phone and cable plans. Uh, we recently cut down cable plans at our home um, you know we didn't have a very good our, we actually went up on the on the uh, cell phone plan because we were using more minutes and getting charged more um, so it could be a, a scenario where you need to buy the next higher thing so that you're not having to work uh, have, not having to have the service fees and things like that um, eating out eating out is a huge expense um, and then many people have high insurance premiums you know, they may have a health insurance plan with uh, a really low deductible, uh, with copays that they don't use. Uh, it may be better for them to go to an HSA plan or a higher deductible plan. It could help them save uh, quite a bit of money per month. But the main question to ask is when you're trying to figure out where the leaks are, where are you spending money that you didn't know about? Some of the other leaks, uh, wasteful utility use. Uh, did we buy too much food at the grocery store? Did some of it spoil uh, before we could eat it? Uh, costly entertainment. Uh, I see quite a few people who buy uh, too many clothes for their children. I mean, their, their, kids, their kids will actually outgrow the clothes before they can ever wear them. Uh, are we spending a lot of money on repairs? Uh, in some cases, 
it's worth buying a, a newer vehicle if you're spending if the money you're spending on repairs is equal to the value of that vehicle. Um, so again, it's just it's just going through looking at what your expenses are uh, and seeing them written down. Uh, it really it really puts them into focus uh, so that you don't forget about them. You know, some of the other items that can be trimmed, uh, entertainment, uh, transportation, cell phone, hobbies, electronics. Uh, I would encourage everyone to go back and look at what they're spending on Amazon and what they're spending on iTunes. Uh, those things, uh, those businesses know how to generate income. <laughs> uh, it's very easy to swipe on the app that I want to buy that. Uh, but ask yourself, do I really need that? Uh, so, uh, one of the other things, uh, after you, as you're developing the spending plan, hopefully you'll become motivated to say, "Oh gosh, I can I can actually trim some more expenses there and there and there." Instead of buying your lunch every day, um, go to the grocery store and and take a brown bag for lunch, um, or instead of uh, buying coffee at Starbucks, uh, buy some premium coffee and make it at home. Uh, it still may be a little more expensive than regular, but you can you can get more bang for your buck. Um, so this slide indicates um, if these items were purchased, if the items on the left were purchased three times per week, uh, this is the total yearly cost at the bottom on the left-hand side. Uh, so a cup of gourmet coffee at $1.70, now, granted, these prices might be a little bit different depending on where people live. Uh, that could be up to two hundred sixty-five dollars and twenty cents per year. Uh, and a sandwich at four fifty. I mean, you, you can see how it how it all adds up. Um, and but you think, gosh, it's just a dollar twenty-five cents for for a bottle of of Coke. That's not that bad. Or uh, a lottery ticket at two dollars. Um, that doesn't sound very expensive, but it all adds up. Uh, if you flip to the next page, this gives you an example of if you were able to eliminate or trim the expenses from the previous slide and, and replace replace those expenses with this current slide per week, that would cost you $26.70. Uh, so loaf of bread, again, these prices are going to vary depending on where people live. Uh, a loaf of bread could be two to five dollars. Coffee could be two dollars. Bagels. If you go and buy those items in bulk, uh, you're going to get a lot more for your money. You know that, that's that's one of the easiest places to find money in a person's budget. So when you get to the spending plan, uh, the most difficult thing is once you've gotten to it, worked on it, put it in practice, is to stick with it. You've got to be disciplined, and uh, you've got to work hard to say no. We're not going to we're not going to fudge a little bit here or there. We got to know how every dollar is spent. And in fact, I even tell people, not just know how every dollar is spent, but make sure your money is working for you. And have a calendar, uh, or have a a ledger a ledger sheet that you can record your expenses on. And because most people, once we spend it, we'll forget about it. We won't know that you know what we thought was ten dollars was actually fifteen dollars. And we will have forgotten about it. Uh, you know, track your spending for a week, and uh, then for a month, and then try it for 90 days. And um, you know, once you've gotten the hang of it, you will have changed your lifestyle. It won't, and you won't have to be so steadfast on that. But the main thing is stick to the spending plan. You know, as I just mentioned, uh, as you work through the spending plan and stick to it. You'll begin, you'll, you'll begin to develop lifestyle changes. Um, so don't use credit cards when you don't need them. If you do need to use a credit card, then pay the balance off in full. Uh, try to avoid impulsive spending. Uh, plan ahead and spend wisely. You know, Just because you see something on an advertisement or um, on Facebook or, or wherever does not mean that we need to go out and purchase it just because we have the money too. Uh, we, we may not have budgeted that money for that expense. But the goal is to keep as much of your money as you can. Uh, treat every dollar as though it was your last dollar. So again, back to this idea of a, a culture of saving, 
constantly look for dollars to save. It, it becomes a challenge. It becomes a game. Uh, and it can be fun. It can, it can become fun because you know you're rewarding yourself. These are some examples of, of options that I've heard of uh, for, for families that want to save up for a special purchase. Uh, and obviously, because we're using change, it may not be a large purchase, but, uh, but try to fill up a jar. Try to fill up a mason jar or try to fill up a, a, a piggy bank. Whatever it is, then once that's full, you can use that amount to purchase something fun for the family. Uh, a lot of people have heard of the envelope system. Uh, the envelope system is a, it's a budget idea. You have different envelopes, and you only put the amount of money needed in those envelopes for a particular item on your budget. So if it's groceries, and you plan to spend $150 at the grocery store, then you only put $150 of cash into that envelope. And when you go to the grocery store, that envelope is the only thing you take. You don't take your credit card. You don't take your checkbook. You only take the cash in that envelope, uh, therefore guaranteeing that that's the, that's the only amount of money that you're going to spend. Um, and by using that and knowing that I've only got $150 in here, you're only going to get the things that you need. You know, this is, this is not considered the money that you put in your envelopes. It's not considered found money. It's considered trimmed money. Uh, you know, it's, it's trimmed from... It, it's savings that you've trimmed from your uh, from not having that extra expense. You know, more ideas of frugal living. Uh, you can pack a lunch. Uh, you can rent a movie. Uh, especially in today's climate, uh, today's economy, many movies are coming out via streaming services. Uh, I know for Disney Plus, they may ask you to pay a pay a a, uh, a rental fee for a new movie, but that rental fee for a family of four is much cheaper than actually going to the movie theater. And that's one thing on, on streaming services. I would, I would recommend that people go back through the streaming services that they're, that they're using and get rid of some of them, uh, especially if they overlap. Uh, you know, Netflix and Disney Plus and Amazon Prime and Hulu, all of those in many cases carry the same movies but they also have separate prices. So you're paying more for and not getting it, not getting more for your money. Now use carpool if you're able to. Uh, walk or ride a bike. Uh, and then a lot of uh, energy companies will have energy savings plans that you can register for, or they may offer um, a team of people to come out and look at the ductwork in your home. Uh, that can be uh, long-term savings. Uh, it won't necessarily be instant, instant savings, but... But those are all things that can help. Other ideas that we've used before, uh, when my wife and I want to go on a date, sometimes we'll ask uh, family, family members or uh, friends to watch our children, and we'll trade off. We do not use any paid storage. We, we have a rule that we do have an attic, but we have a rule that nothing goes in that attic. Uh, so that way we don't, we're not accumulating a bunch of extra stuff. And then I know a lot of people currently, they, if there's items in their house that they don't need, they'll there's plenty of opportunities to sell those items uh, on social media uh, and other, other, uh, other places. On the frugal living part, one thing, uh, you know, when you do have some excess funds, do some preventative maintenance on your home. Or preventative maintenance on your vehicles is, is especially important. You know, getting oil changes, things like that, uh, on a scheduled basis. That way, uh, you're able to extend the life of your home, of your vehicle. Those, if you do that on a regular basis, you're going to spend less money long term. Uh, grocery shop shopping. I didn't know until recently that uh, produce is not taxed, uh, but fast food is. You know, look for bonus cards, look for coupons. A lot of uh, grocery shopping apps now, or uh, I know there's one, at least one particular uh, grocery store in town that if you go to their website and do their shopping, your grocery shopping on, on their website, they automatically bring in coupons. Uh, uh, the first time that we used it, I think we saved $150. And then reduce the number of times that you go shopping. Uh, like I said earlier, you can buy bulk from a grocery store um, or from a bulk grocery store, and uh, you're going to get a little bit of extra savings there. When you do go to the grocery store, make a list. Or if, you, if I've got to go to Lowe's or, or any type of uh, store similar to that, I'm going to have a list. Because if I don't have a list... It's easy for me to, to lose focus and say, oh, I need that, 
I want that, I want that. And the next thing I know, I spent twice as twice the amount of money that I'd planned on spending that day. Clothing shopping. Now, a lot of guys don't have this problem. Uh, and I tend to stick to the basics, uh, so I'm going to tread lightly here. I understand that uh, the kids... The kids need clothes, they need uniforms, they need, uh, you know, there's certain things that the kids have got to have, but we can't, don't overdo it. Or if you see something on sale for your children, buy it so that it will fit them later on. You know, don't buy it at the size they are now, uh, knowing that they've already got four pairs of shoes at home. Uh, you know, compare prices. Uh, uh, in our family, we, we pass clothing down. Uh, and I know a lot of people do this already, but... Uh, it's just a good reminder. Uh, and then shop of season, end of season sales. Uh, it's not not regarding clothing, but I remember our first Christmas tree that we bought. We bought it after Christmas, uh, and it was the, the display model. Uh, so they gave us, there's a discount because it was after Christmas, and they gave us an additional large discount because it was the display model. Uh, and that tree lasted us for nearly 10 years. But but do all of these things, and, and don't be afraid to ask, uh, is this the best price? Or or negotiate a little bit, um, because the very worst that somebody can say is no. So large ticket items, uh, like televisions, vehicles, those are things that are important. In most cases, they are they are necessary. Now, I would caution someone to make sure that they're not having too many televisions in their home. Always compare first. You know, use the internet. The internet's your friend. Use the internet and, you know, look at the features of the item that you need to purchase. Uh, what price incentives are there? What kind of tax taxes are there? Are there are there any incentive packages? Uh, what about the warranties? Is it cheaper to rent or buy? Uh, there's whole lots of different, a uh, whole lot of different things to look for. And in many cases, if you find it on one site, it might be cheaper on another. Um uh, and if it's cheaper on that other site, the store you want to buy it from may have a price match guarantee or something similar to that. But for these large ticket items, if possible, I always recommend saving up the cash uh, and purchase, making a one-time purchase. You know, for example, on the bottom of this, uh, it gives an example to rent or buy. This particular item costs $300 to purchase or... If you pay $60 a month over two years, then you're going to pay $1,140. So that's an $840 difference. And, you know, that if they'd, purchase, if they'd saved up the $300 to purchase it that one time, then it'd be much better for them. One of the other things that I do when I'm, when I'm purchasing large ticket items, I try my best to negotiate. Uh, not to be mean. I want to pay a fair price, and I want whoever's selling me that item I want them to receive a fair compensation for it. And in most cases, I try my best to know the person that I'm dealing with uh, so that I can have trust in them. And I, you know, I, I have faith that they're doing what's in my best interest too, especially for uh, vehicles. Gosh, when you're going to look at a vehicle, you need to do your homework first. Uh, know your credit score. Uh, compare what's, what's the cost of this new model vehicle versus a two or three year old vehicle. What are the changes in that vehicle? Uh, look for the end of model year. Uh, know the features before you go. Uh, and in this case, if possible, know the person that owns the dealership. Uh, what are they like? What Are they willing to work with you? Know about your current vehicle before you go in. Uh, know, know what its realistic value is. You know, these are all things that, that, will, that will help save some money for you. Uh, and if you can get your credit score up a little bit before you purchase that vehicle, that could save you a considerable considerable amount of money. Concerning new versus used vehicles, used vehicles you can negotiate on. New vehicles, uh, there's very, very little room for negotiation. Um, so go in with that mindset, trying to get the best deal that you can get, as long as it's fair for the person selling it to you and fair and a fair price for you to pay. You know, vehicles, again, shop the dealerships. Uh, there are dealerships that will give uh, warranties. Uh, there are dealerships that um, 
that are just looking to make the best bang, looking to make the best sales. Um, you know, know who you're dealing with, know the dealership, and know that just about any dealership can sell almost any type of vehicle in a, in a used market. Right now, in particular, used vehicles uh, are extremely expensive because the inventory is low for new vehicles. Um, so when you go to a dealership now looking for a used vehicle, you're probably going to pay more for it now than you would have last year or, or this time next year. Um, and then insurance, same thing. Shop the cost for insurance. Uh, call different insurance agents, uh, different insurance companies, uh, as long as they're reputable people and reputable carriers. Um, make sure that you're buying a product that is good, not something that will not work when you need it. Um, so the insurance carriers are going to need another model, the location, the price, um, whether it's got some sort of security uh, measures in place. Um, they're going to want to know the mileage, who's driving it, what your driving record is. There's all sorts of things that go into that conversation, but shop the cost of insurance. You know, home buying. I always tell people if they need to buy a new home, make sure that it fits their budget. Uh, don't try to purchase the house in the, the newest neighborhood or just because someone else has a house in that neighborhood, whatever. Um, buy the house that fits them. Um, and buy the house that they can live comfortably in. Just because they can afford the mortgage payments does not mean that it's a comfortable house for them. And because you've got insurance on that house. You've got taxes on the house. And you may need to buy furniture for the house. So those are all things that they need to keep in mind. And go to foreclosures. Look at, look at HUD homes. And, you know, talk to developers that are building new homes. They may have more inventory than they need to have. And shop the interest rates. Uh, again, this goes back to knowing, knowing the mortgage broker or knowing, knowing the banker on a personal level if possible, um, and finding someone that you can trust because they will be honest with you. Um, and then when you, go, when, you, when you go to close on the property, negotiate those prices. Uh, I always think that everything is, is up for negotiation. Again, trying to be fair to all parties, but also um, trying to get the best price as possible. Now, is, uh, when we're talking about refinancing here, uh, now is a good time to refinance because interest rates are historic lows, are at historic lows. Um, however, you need to be in the house for at least three years if you're going to refinance your home. Um, the typical uh, refinancing costs may be $3,000. You've got to be able to make up $3,000 in savings in order for that to make sense. So if you're only going to live in that house for another year or 18 months, then it's probably not best to go through refinancing right now. If you plan on living in that house for a long term, there's a potential to save uh, quite a bit of years on your mortgage if you can refinance. Home equity loans, don't do it for the wrong reasons. Mainly because we're, what we're trying to get away from here is increasing your debt. For people who are using home equity line of credit like a regular credit card, please don't do that. Um, if you're trying to cash out, incurring new costs, or increasing your debt, that's not the purpose of the home equity loans. My uh, suggestion there is find a banker that you can trust that's at a very reputable bank and, and talk to them about it. Vacations. Uh, everybody likes a vacation, even though no one can take a vacation right now. I encourage all of my clients to plan, save for a vacation. Uh, try not to go on a spur of the moment vacation. Save up for it, you know, plan for it, and get the whole family involved. Because that way, once you're able to take the vacation, everyone will appreciate a lot more. A vacation shouldn't become a financial burden. Uh, you don't want to bring that vacation home with you uh, in terms of having to pay for it after the vacation. If you need to take a part-time job, take it before the vacation, not after to pay it off, but take that part-time job to save up for it. Because uh, I, I guarantee you that if you've got the money and paid for it in full before you go, you're going to enjoy the vacation a whole lot more uh, than you will after. So um, this last few slides are just, just some additional ideas. Um, the main thing is 
If you're trying to keep more of your dollars, you've got to act. You've got to do something. It's not going to happen by itself or happen automatically. Call creditors if you have creditors. Uh, negotiate their interest rates and fees. Uh, if you need to work out a new payment plan, I, in most cases, they're more than willing to do that. When you're investing, do your research. Find out what type of investment vehicles there are, what type of investment accounts there are. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, you want to know the fees. There's, there's so much information out there that it's, it's difficult to know well unless you're working with a professional. Once you find one that you're comfortable with, ask them about their fees. Ask them, how do they do their business? How do they earn their money? Um, I encourage all of my clients to ask me that up front. If they don't ask me, I tell them that uh, during, that, during the first meeting, and I want to, because I want to be fair to them. You know, on your tax savings, uh, make sure everything's filed correctly. Uh, and make sure that uh, you're having the, the correct amount withheld out of every paycheck. Many times we hear people that hear of people that had too much withheld uh, because they want a large lump sum uh, in their return. I would suggest, no, you can plan better than that. Have the appropriate amount withheld so that you can plan better. You have more, you have more cash coming into your, your spending plan uh, and help you plan a little bit better. So you can reduce your tax liability by utilizing a flexible spending plan. Uh, it could be a health savings account. Um, there's lots of things that the government will allow you to use your, use your money on that will reduce um, your income tax liability. As far as the uh, refund anticipation loans, avoid that if, if all possible. Um, you know, again, if you have questions about that, uh, talk to a CPA, talk to a financial professional. Uh, that's really a little bit deeper than we need to go to go through uh, on, on this presentation. The priorities have really got to come before all of this. You can't say that I want to keep up with my neighbors or keep up with the Joneses in this case. Uh, you got to do what's right for your family, uh, for your children, based on the goals that y'all have. You don't need to compete with the Joneses because you never know the Gucci bag that, that they're carrying may be filled up with not dollars but coins. The 50-inch TV that you that, that you see your friend has, it may not be necessary for you. It may not even fit in the room that you have. Know what's important, uh, cut back, and, and try to save and plan for the future. There's a man named Warren Buffett that uh, I encourage everybody to look into. He's uh, a really interesting individual. He's one of the richest men in the world. He's known for being extremely frugal, uh, and he can afford just about the best of anything. You know, he's, he's known for, uh, he lives in Omaha, Nebraska, and he's known for living in uh, a very modest home. I think he purchased this home 30, 40 years ago. Uh, hasn't, need, hasn't seen a, a need to make an upgrade or anything like that. He's been happy with his decisions. Uh, but he's got larger goals, and he spends his money wisely. He wasn't a millionaire early, early on. He, he did everything the right way. You know, just to review, uh, know your total income. Track and plan your spending. Look for and plug the leaks. If you can, add automatic savings to your plans. That way you won't have to think about it. You know, the automatic savings could be in the form of 401ks. It could be transferring money to savings accounts every month. Um, but, but try to add those automatic savings. Uh, involve your family in the process. That way it's not a, it's not a struggle to, to get everybody on board. Um, and everyone knows that the sac knows, understands the sacrifices that the family makes for future goals. Um, don't go along with the crowds, whether that's to the mall or to buy new vehicles or whatever it is, do what's best for your family. Uh, create a rainy day fund. Uh, a rainy day fund, uh, that's, a, that's a saying of you know, creating a, create a fund, a savings account fund that you can use when something bad happens. Maybe the air conditioner goes out. Maybe you get a flat tire and need to buy a new tire for your vehicle. Uh, but create a rainy day fund so that you don't have to buy those things on credit. Instead, you can pay it with cash and, and, and not pay too much for it. And uh, you know, think like a millionaire. Think like Warren Buffett. Uh, be frugal with your money. Do try to avoid unnecessary expenses. And, and research, research, research uh, when you're coming up for uh, big expenses. Thank you all for being a part of today's uh, session. Uh, Francisco, I really appreciate the invitation. Uh, and 
I encourage each of you, if you have any questions, reach out to someone that you trust, uh, reach out to uh, a person that may have some knowledge in this. Uh, and again, uh, we, would love to be, we would love to help if anyone has any additional questions. Well, absolutely. Thank you so much uh, for being here, Michael. It was a pleasure to have you. I'm sure that our families and our community is, is well, it has a lot more knowledge on how to finance, on how to manage their finances during a difficult time. Thank you once again for being a part of our Lobo Strongview Financial Literacy Series. We hope you have uh, a wonderful time and we hope you enjoy the rest of our sessions. Thank you so much.